Cheers and welcome to another, well you guessed it right, <laughs> Command and Colors Ancients, yeah that's what we're playing here. So we're continuing from this booklet which is the bonus pack 2, including the uh, scenarios from the Mercenary Wars or Truceless War, as it's uh, labeled here. Um, and today we're gonna play the Battle of Utica, which is the proper Battle of Utica. We if you remember the last uh, scenario we played here, we uh, we were at Utica, but that was um, Hanno the Great's attempt to break the siege of Utica that the, the rebels were uh, conducting. Um, he was not that successful in the end, so he had to return to Carthage. And the year after, 240 BC, uh, Mr. Hamilcar Barca got the command of the Carthaginian army uh, and was uh, entrusted to uh, break the siege and attack the rebel forces there. So the problem for him was of course that he didn't really have any better troops than Hanno the Great had before him. Um, more or less hastily trained citizens. Um, but he had some good quality uh, cavalry and he had also the elephants. Uh, so relying on those, that force he, he decided to do the attack anyway. By the way, Hamilcar Barca at this point of time was already a kind of famous uh, because he did fought in or fight in uh, the first Punic War, even though he really didn't have any big battles with the Romans in on Sicily. Uh, towards the end of the war, he was actually uh, doing some successful things on Sicily, but he had a minor force there, but kind of did a, a kind of guerrilla war uh, up on mostly the northern parts of Sicily where he did raids and harassed Roman supply lines and attacked cities and uh, uh, you know expelled garrisons from different cities there so he, he was quite successful and made himself quite famous there so this is of course one of the reasons why he was entrusted this uh, important task to uh, attack the rebels. And he was a cunning man because the rebels who were besieging Utica and some other cities, uh, they were also, they had also dispatched a force uh, holding the, I think it was the, actually the only bridge, I'm not really sure about that, but there was a, an important bridge, we can say that at least, uh, over the Bagradas river, so the rebels had a substantial force there to block any, any Carthaginian attempts to cross, and Hamilcar of course was, um, he, he had to cross that river if he gonna reach the, the rebel units uh, uh, outside of Utica. Utica by the way was pretty close to Carthage itself. Anyway, uh, during the night he he managed to cross the river secretly. Uh, I have no clue at what point uh, how, how, how far away from that bridge he did, he did it, but uh, I guess at least uh, he managed to get the whole force over and suddenly or yeah, suddenly he appeared on the other side of the river and was arraying for battle when the rebel army uh, managed to see him. And um, the rebels came with reinforcements from Utica and here we see some of the leaders uh, co uh, coming in here to to meet Hamilcar Barca. We have Spendius who is one of these, uh, uh, well, he's one of the two main characters of this rebellion. Uh, he's a, um, I think he's from, I think he's from Italy somewhere, I'm, I'm not really sure if it was uh, Brutium or something, I don't, I don't know. But he's a runaway slave from Italy, um, from uh, the Romans. And then we have also another leader here, Autaritas, who is a uh, Gaul. So he's with along some Gaul, Gaul warriors here, uh, or Gallic warriors. and. 
they were, well, rushing into here to meet Hamilcar Barca, and probably Hamilcar saw that they were rushing in, and uh, rushing in with force actually. So he did the cunning, another cunning thing. The first was of course to cross the river by night. That was uh, that was kind of a good thing to do, you know, to manage to do that with a whole of whole army. Uh, so he kind of uh, played along with the rebels, uh, thinking they were overwhelming him, and he kind of panicked, you know, panicked and retreated, and the rebels charged forward to uh, to attack the fleeing Carthaginians. But this was all in Hamilcar's uh, plan, so suddenly he stopped his forces, turned them over, and especially the elephants, and rushed them into, basically crashed into the, the rebel forces here. And they were quite scattered already from the beginning because of this uh, hastily pursue of the Carthaginian army, so uh, they couldn't really organize themselves to, you know, to, to build a united front here against the elephants and the forces. So the elephant crashed in here. Uh, at the same time, uh, Hamilcar unleashed his uh, cavalry to the flanks, crashing in there, and that became too much. So already there, uh, the rebels started to flee and rout. So in the end, it said that uh, 6,000 rebels were killed and some 2,000 were captured, actually, after this uh, action. So, pretty pretty hefty action here. Um, so, yeah, so Hamilcar was, uh, was really successful here, here and uh, because of uh, uh, the recent failure of the Carthaginian forces, they were facing, you know, the, the well, they, they could potentially be an, an, an uh, siege of uh, Carthage itself, which uh, the Carthaginians were afraid of. But thanks to this, this uh, victory, they managed to uh, expel that immediate threat to Carthage. And probably also it was a morale boost for the Carthaginian soldiers so they could uh, fight on. Because this war will, will go on for a, f a few uh, years more, so this was a kind of a large scale uh, rebellion who that was not quelled just like that. I think it was, I read somewhere it was uh, rebels had all in all like 70,000 men or something, it's crazy. Anyway, um, that's basically it for this battle as uh, historical background. So let's check the war council. So we have uh, the Carthaginians led by Hamilcar Barca and six command cards and they are moving first. The rebel army under Spendius, uh, they have four command cards. So we have a two card difference here, which will be reflected on our card display. And I expect this to be rather short. First of all, because it's uh, five banners. And the second reason I will talk about when we look at the forces, uh, there's no special rules, there's no terrain, so it's a plain fight on open ground here. Um, so, let's check out the forces then. First of all, here we see the, the card layout, so the Carthaginians will have extra cards in slot A and B, thanks to their two card difference in favor for them. Um, and here we have the forces. So, let's start with the, let's start with the Carthaginians this time. So, even though it said that they were quite of low quality. Uh, the scenario has them as pretty okay as a force, I'd say. I mean, we have three uh, medium-heavy infantry there, and that's quite good. I mean, those guys fight as good as, you know, Roman legionaries, so that's not bad. So we have Hamilcar with them, and uh, uh, yeah, three of them flanked by two um, auxiliaries. So that would be a slightly lighter kind of troops. And in front of them we have two skirmishers, and they are in, uh, flanked by the cavalry units, and that would be two uh, medium heavies. We also have a leader with one of the on the left flank um, cavalry there. Uh, he's an unnamed one, by the way. And then we have 
the real tanks here. Three of them are uh, elephant units ready to crash into the rebel lines. So the rebels then. Well, starting from the left, they have some light cavalry over here holding the flank and then some light infantry. Um, no, sorry, light slingers. That are two slinger units over there. So they they will have some skirmishes with good range. Then we have three units of auxilia back here. Then we have the center section, kind of. Here we have Spendius himself. And here we here we have the well, the good quality of, of the rebel force. I mean we have two medium heavy infantry with Spendius, and then uh, a heavy one. I could guess these guys are uh, perhaps Greek Greek mercenaries here. Uh, they are uh, screened by a light infantry uh, over there. And on the right we have another light infantry and then uh, we have uh, uh, the Gauls over here with a leader and then another uh, light cavalry over there holding the flank. So, yeah, two leaders, Hamilcar and an unnamed one, and he has Spendius and <coughs> Autaritas, the, the Gaul over here. So, first thing to notice here, there are many gaps in the rebel line, probably reflecting their uh, hastily pursue of the Carthaginians, so they are in a kind of a disarray. So, it will be hard to play good cards activating many of them if the, I mean, if you get, you know, double times or or line commands or leader activate leader cards you know so they need to get their act together here uh, if we if you're gonna talk some tactics here because we are only fighting until we get five banners so time is of essence here so we need quickly to assemble the forces to be able to meet the, the Carthaginians because once we do that we have well, they have the elephants, that's for sure, but they are vulnerable to, to some skirmishing here. So if we can get the troops together and get in some good uh, fire on those elephants, making them rot and panic, we could uh, survive as the rebels. As for the Carthaginians, I can only see one thing to do, and that's rush head on and hopefully we can get those elephants into action right away because they are in striking range already from the beginning i mean imagine if we can order all three elephants i mean those guys can reach the heavies already and those guys can reach one of the mediums and that guy well they can reach uh at least uh auxilia here so we could do some pretty heavy damage from turn one if we can get the the good cards and if we also can get support from those medium heavy cavalry then I mean this could be over in a few turns in if we get the right cards for the for the Carthaginians here and you know they go first uh, imagine if we get a, a mounted charge or order mounted at least then we could end up with uh, a banner or two already after the first turn so this will be a really interesting I'm really looking forward to this and to reveal the cards here so I think uh, with further, without further delay, I'd say we we start the game, right? Okay. So let's check out the card menu for the Carthaginians here. We have uh, you can all <laughs> the first thing I I see is a mounted charge. That was the card I was talking about. So this is I promise you I haven't set this up. I have shuffled the cards. Um, we have two units left and the mounted charge, and we have uh, uh, what's here? Clash of Shields. Okay. Well, you know, if we can play this the turn one and this turn two, it's over, <laughs> perhaps. But uh, yeah, that was really cool to have that as the first card. I I was talking about that card, and that was the first card I <laughs> I uh, flip up. That's crazy. Anyway. Um, we don't know yet if they're gonna play it because we need to roll for it, you know. So, but if we get an A or B card, we know what to do, and we can order, you know, up to six uh, units, and we have five units. Okay, let's see. Okay, unfortunately for the Carthaginians, they cannot play that mounted charge. So it's a D or E, but they have two cards here as well. So we're gonna see what we have. Two units right. 
uh, two units left or darken the sky. Well, well, well. Hmm. Well, I think we're gonna activate one of the flanks then. I mean, we can activate one elephant and one cavalry with that, and that's. I think that's good enough, and then we're just gonna hope we can play the mounted charge the turn after. And. What flank to activate? I think we're gonna go with that flank because here we can hit their heavies uh, right now. So I'm gonna go for two units right. No, sorry, that's that would be two units left from Cardinian point of view. Um, two units left, and as I said, that's gonna be the elephant and the medium heavy with the leader here. And the elephant's gonna rush into here, and the cavalry goes here. We're gonna attack Spendius now, or maybe his uh, body here. Let's see, who should we start with? I think we go with... I think I do the at attack of the elephants first, because if I can scare those guys away or even kill them, uh, we will attack Spendius on the second one, and then the cavalry hopefully can finish the job. Let's see. Okay, so here's a big elephant crash coming in, and you know that will give me five dice in the attack, and that's crazy. Yeah, we're gonna re-roll all the uh, sword symbols. None got, and we only hit with one. So this was not an impressive charge by those elephants, though. Uh, pity, that would be nice. But the worst thing of all is those guys stand their ground, there were no flags, and they will now hit back with five dice. So this could really be the end of those elephants. They're though no, not hurt by any of these. So we're gonna remove that, but we got one red and one flag. So remove that one, and then, well, here's a stampage happening. So we're gonna roll two dice for each and every adjacent unit. So we have three of them, so let's start with the heavies. Oh, okay, here comes the revenge of the elephants. They trampled two blocks uh, during the battle back. That's crazy. <laughs> Okay, so these guys almost got eliminated anyway. Uh, then we have these lights. No hits there. And we have yet another light on that right hand side. No hits there either. So the heavies got trampled. And now these guys need to retreat. And let's go here. Uh, Alright. Pretty good in the end anyway. Or maybe we could say an exchange with the Calginians well. Well, both guys have one black le block left, so they're close to a victory banner there. Uh, then we have the cavalry, and let's take these ones because they are not supported, so they will not, they cannot handle one single flag. So uh, three dice in the attack, not many dice, of course, but we had the leader with us, and we are hoping for a flag. Two hits and a flag would be the best result here. Uh, too bad, only one hit. Too bad. No good battle rolls here from the Cartaginians. Uh, four dice in the battle back. And that's one, two, and three hits because those guys are adjacent to Spendius. So this cavalry actually goes down. That was not expected. And the first victory banner goes to the rebels. Let's put them here. And now we're gonna see how this cavalry uh, leader, if he survives, he did not, he did f uh, fall with those uh, horses, so he's gone as well, and you know what, the rebels get the second banner. This is really going the opposite way that I was thinking, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, so that was the first activation of this game, and full action from the beginning. So we're gonna give uh, the Cartaginias there. Oh, let's put them in the center here. Their second card on slot D then. And then it's the Rebels, so we're gonna check first what they have in slot A. A move, fire, move. Uh, not bad, that could also give, back, give us um, time to close the lines actually. 
and the B card is a rally. Well, that could also be good because we have lost loads of blocks here, so it would be cool to rally and then do a counterattack with those Greeks or whatever the, those guys are. But we're gonna see if they are able to play any of those cards. Let's see. That's a A or B. So which one should we take? The move fire move is I mean that could be really deadly. We have so many guys in range of those elephants now. We could attack each and every elephant to be honest. So this is really really tempting to play as the rebel. I'm equally tempted to play the rally because I can get back those needed blocks here. So as I used to do, I'm gonna roll for it guys. Uh, I cannot decide. I let the dice gods or maybe it's Baal this time who's gonna decide who who or which card we'll play. So it's a one, two, three, we play the move fire move and do the well activate loads of lights and try to get those elephants by heavy missile fire. Or four to six, we try to rally the uh, the guys who were running away from these heavy uh, formations and get them back to fight. Let's see. It's a move fire move. Okay, that's fine. So we can now order up to equal to command. So it's four units. But that's okay. I mean, we can attack here, we can attack here, here, and anyone else? Who should we put in? So we can get one fire here, one there, one here, and then one additional somewhere. Maybe we should. Uh, maybe we should do what we can against those. Let's put something that can fire at either of these guys. So I'm gonna activate these guys. So here's the move, and these guys will move up here. So they have moved, let's mark them as that. The old other guys will not move, they will just fire. That will be good. So these guys have two options now, as it stands. So, it's time for the fire then. So the slingers will throw their stones against those elephants. Two dice. And nothing. That was bad. So, Let's let's attack the same unit with the second slinger. And let's keep that activated by the way, because we can actually move again. So the second slinger attack, here comes. Okay. Two flags. That means we're gonna check for these uh, medium heavy cavalry first, if there's any trample effect happening. Nope, they're survived, but these elephants need to go two steps backwards. Then we have, let's take those guys, they have not moved, so it's two dice, and you know one hit would be enough to get our third victory banner, that could be worth it, right? But we missed, too bad. But we have one attack, it's a one die attack, the same elephant, we need to get that now, come on. Nah, another miss, too bad. So now we can move again, so let's see. Let's try to close the ranks now. So these guys will move here. Um, well, we'll put these guys here. Like that. I uh, think these slingers are fine. And these lights, well, too bad they can't retreat from this position. Um, but hey, they can ignore one flag, so let's keep them here. That's okay. So now, as you can see, we have a continuous line all the way. All the infantry, except the, the Gauls who want to be on their own here on the right-hand flank, uh, all are connected now, so we can... If we get any good line commands or anything, we have a big bunch of units who can activate. Okay. Let's replace that one. This actually started a bit differently than I thought. I, I thought actually the onslaught from the Cataginians would be 
much more heavy. Okay, now the, there is a danger now, of course, because we didn't play the rally and the move fire move didn't play out really that well. We could lose these guys by an desperate elephant attack, but Cartaginians needs to be a bit lucky with the dice, though. So let's see what what card they can play. It's an A, B, or C. So now we have the mounted charge. We have two units left. We have the clash of shields, which is not really good right now, and then we have also order medium troops. But you know what? Uh, I'm gonna play the uh, mounted charge. Too bad these guys retreated two hexes because I cannot really. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe I can move one extra with these. Uh, heavy units may move three hexes. All right. I can actually get those elephants into action, but that will be against these guys. But those cannot retreat, so maybe it's worth it. So I'm gonna do it. Let's see if the second Katagina attack is more successful than the first one. So I will move back here. I will move back here. Uh, it's bad we lost that leader. That would have been really cool having it with these guys. But that's how it goes. Um, so these guys need to attack the Auxilia. These guys don't have any other target then. Let's keep them here so we are not adjacent to our own cavalry. We could lose blocks if we get any any flags against us there. Alright, so this is it. But remember we have one more die in these attacks. Or more importantly, I should remember it. I used to forget that time to time. Uh, let's start on this flank this time. So and we start with the elephants because I want to attack those guys first before I attack those guys. Uh, just because I don't want these guys to be able to evade or retreat. So that will give me two dice from the beginning, but the card gives me a third die. Let's see, I'll, I hope for lots of uh, sword symbols. Um, well, one block down, not too impressive. These guys will now battle back. They missed though. Well, that was not too impressive. Um, I warned if I should attack these guys then with the cavalry. I think I maybe should. That would give me four dice. I could get them with a bit of luck. Come on. Ah, crap. This is going southwards for the Cataginians. Not a single hit and only one flag which they can take because they are supported. So they will now battle back. Those slingers are tough guys even though they don't hit anything either, but what a waste of uh, good offensive power from the Carthaginians here. Not happy with that. Okay, let's see if the elephants here are more lucky. So we're gonna attack that heavy again. Five dice, one hit needed. Should not be too hard. Nope, we got it. So eventually we got this heavy infantry. Um, so that's the third, no, sorry, that's the Carthaginian first banner. Uh, we can go in and we can attack again, so we're gonna do that against that medium heavy with Spendius. Four dice, no, sorry, I should have, I should actually have six dice on the, on the last battle, but I didn't need that. But now I'm gonna remember to add the fifth dice against those guys because I have the extra die from here. So, five dice, let's see. Um, two hits, right? So two of these medium heavies goes down. And let's do the leader loss check as well. He's fine, so those mediums will now retaliate. And now this could be end for the, those elephants, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, thanks to the leader symbols, they got him. So, Spendius was leading a counter charge against the elephants and managed to kill them. So now we have the third banner for the rebels. We still have one elephant attack to do and they will crash into these uh, medium heavies that took the last battle here with the cavalry, I think it was. So here we have five dice, thanks to the mounted charge. 
And I can't believe how bad I'm rolling for the guys now. It's a not a single hit and only a flag. So those guys, they are not scared of those elephants. They managed to halt them just in front of them, probably with a shower of javelins. And then comes the counterattack with four dice. And that's one red and a leader, meaning those elephants go down. And we got the fourth band of the rebel. So they are one step from victory now. Who could, who could believe that? I didn't. I'm sh really crazy, actually. Okay, so we're gonna give the Cartaginians their replacement card, and then it's the rebels, and they could really end this battle now. They have a few places to do it. They can even, if they got the correct or a good activations, they couldn't even uh, put these cavalry into a sack and hammer them from all directions. Let's see what they can get. It's a C, D or E. That would be three units left, sounds good. Uh, three units right, well, not that impressive. And then light troops, and I think this is it. Because that's what we need. We need a lot of light troops. This would be four units. So we can now... I think we can get that cavalry now actually with this. Because here we have some light infantry, more light infantry, and then we need some some heavy uh, punchers. And we take those two auxilia for that job. So these guys rushes one back here. They have moved. And these guys moves here. So they have now close the retreat pass of that cavalry and then we move up these guys into a close combat situation here so now we're gonna hammer them so we start with the first auxilia here it's three dice remember those guys cannot take one single flag and if they get it they die one flag is enough to kill them well it didn't come from here at least we got one hit so we are wearing them down, but that was not enough. And we have a battle back, of course. Uh, one hit and a flag, but these guys are supported, so they will ignore the flag. But they took a loss, but I think it's worth it. We need to grind those cavalry unit, uh, guys down now. And here we have a second attack coming in. A lot of javelins uh, throwing and then a charge resulting in another hit this is not over yet guys because now the heavy punches are, have done the job we only have light infantry left now to do finish the job so one more down and a battle back no hits in the battle back okay this is not uh, really going as i thought with the uh, auxilia i thought it could kill that unit off but no flags rolled and that's interesting so now we're gonna attack with the lights and the bad thing is the battle back if they survive the first they suddenly have you know uh, a retreat path open but we're gonna do it uh, these guys will attack it's two dice and we really need a flag or a blue symbol then it's over nope that's a miss Maybe the luck is uh, turning now, because they don't hit with uh, sword symbols. So here comes the battle back, and, and now if, if the cavalry manage to roll a flag, then we have uh, a space to evade. Let's see. And we got it. We got one hit and a flag. So this is these guys are fighting fiercely. That goes down, and then they need to retreat to one, two. So they go back to the line, and when the last unit attacks here now. I'm gonna evade or try to. So now they only hit with blue. So it's a really important roll here now. Let's see. No, they missed. So this cavalry got away. One, two. And <laughs> amazingly, this game goes on. They didn't manage to get that uh, last victory banner, even though four units attacked these guys. Pretty, pretty amazing. Good fighting and break out from that sack there. 
All right, then it's a Cataginians, and they have a small chance to get this anyway. Uh, that's crazy. Let's see. Okay, so now we have the face-up tactic cards, and we have a few of them dark in the sky. We have a clash of shields, uh, and that's basically it. Or we play uh, the lowest order count, and that would be two units either on the left or right hand flank. Okay. So clash of shields. That would be these guys. I will get four, four dice with that attack, thanks to the card in that case. Um, well, those guys will of course evade, so I don't think it's worth it. And Dark in the Sky, well, we don't have any guys in range actually, so that's, that's not an option. So we need basically to play the two units left or right. I should have retreated there, right? I couldn't have got away with the uh, cavalry. Um, what should we do? I would like to get these guys in some kind of protection because they are, they can be hit now by the slingers, the slingers reach them. Uh, if these guys march up, they can throw their javelins, you know, so we... Ah, this is bad situation, this is bad. Well, I think I need to play the two units right. And we only have two units there, so the elephants and these. So the elephants will try to... Well, they, they will try to attack. They, they have to, to, you know, defend this cavalry by being... Uh, by offensive means. So they will move here. The auxilia. Let's move them basically here. And the reason for that is basically because I want to place myself adjacent to these guys so they cannot do ranged combat without moving. And for now they have a hard time to find a space where they can, well, they can move back here and attack perhaps. But then they only have at least one die against these. So it's basically to protect the cavalry why I rushed forward with those auxilia here but here's an attack I need to I, I need to try to get those guys now um, they are all supported I know but let's see so we attack the weakened one here first three dice that's one hit and I'm gonna reroll that and that's a miss so we got one hit on these auxilia they will now hit back. And no leader. So that's a flag. Okay, they're gonna retreat. And then that's good. I, I like that because now we also have the trampling effect here. So let's do it. Uh, let's take these auxilia first. The weakened one here, no hits. Then we have the slingers, no hits. And then we have this full strength auxilia. And no hits. And then the elephant goes back one hex. And this is pretty good because now they these guys screen this flank pretty good. So I think I'll, I'll be happy with how things turn out here anyway. All right, then it's the rebels again. C or lowest order count. So it's three units left. Mm -hmm. Or three units right basically and we will of course play the three units left um, but 
but it's not that easy actually. We need to Let's see, one, two, and three. The elephant's gonna be our target. So these guys move back, they have moved. So now I'm gonna throw my missiles against the elephant, hoping them to, you know, because if I get the flag now, these guys will die because all the units blocking the elephants from retreating will lose one block. So we have a pretty good chance again to win the game here with a good bunch of missile fires. Let's start with the with these guys. So they are throwing the javelins against that elephant. Hoping for a flag. Oh, I've got two of them. So this, this is the end of it actually because now those guys need to take uh, at least one block. I don't know if it's, if it's one per flag. It could actually be. So these guys lose two blocks in that case. But the important thing is these guys lose one block and the rebels get their fifth banner. So that's the end of the battle, and uh, the, really the uh, Hamilcar's main line wasn't able to force their way upwards. Uh, they were relying on the elephants and, and cavalry, who did... I mean, they had the cards for it, right? We have a mounted charge, and we had a good, good other charges happening, but they were occasionally rolling really bad, um, so that didn't help them, really. And... The rebels were able to get their act together and get their line, lines together. Uh, they lost the most, perhaps the most important force here, the heavies, but uh, maybe not. Maybe they were, weren't the most important guys in this scenario anyway. The lights were more important, you know. It's, it's, that's the best anti anti uh, elephant measure. So, um, well. Pretty good, uh, pretty good job by the rebels here. Uh, so basically, the Carthaginians has tried twice now to break the siege of Utica, and not really suc uh, being successful here. I mean, this is still not disaster for the for Hamilcar. He has good strength uh, yet, and his infantry force is uh, in good shape. Uh, but the thing is, his most important weapon in in this army was the mountain troops and they had taken very heavy losses so I can imagine he would would try to retreat again but problem number two is how to get over that river again uh, I mean the bridge is blocked and I don't know how easy it's to cross that river again while retreating the river of Bagradas anyway that's not our story the story ends here and we have a winner so and that's an impressive win by the rebels, by the way, five to one. Uh, it could be could have been more, much more uh, even, but there were some bad rolls by the mounted charges here and stuff. So that's it. Um, small and fun battle, though, and I hope you enjoyed too. Um, and next time we will continue with a uh, mercenary wars and uh, or mercenary war, and yeah. Till next time, bye for now.